Good morning from here. How are you doing today? I trust that today is fine. And I trust that God will take charge over everything about you today. Yes, before we start, I would love us to pray. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for your guidance and your protection. Thank you for making us to see this day. As we are starting, you will take charge and glorify yourself in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Like I told us in the last video, so firstly we will start with the essence and limitations of a family. The essence and limitations of a family. You see, according to a group of people, is a group of people that are related by blood. They are related by friendship. They are related by law. ETC. As long as they choose to live or work together. That's who a family is. That's who families are. So we find ourselves in different families. You must have been born in this family. Or you found yourself in this family, or you choose to belong to this family, or this family took you in, or that family took you in. All these have an essence. They all have an essence, and that's what we'll be dealing with today. And one thing I would love you to keep in mind is. Before people talk about something or before men define something, God have already defined it. Yes, he is the origin of all definition. He has already said this is the purpose why I have made this. Yes, this is why I have made this to exist. And this is why I've made that to exist. You see, if you talk, if you looked at the origin of family, it began right from the time of Adam. That's when it began. So we'll be looking at roughly the essence of family in Proverbs chapter one, verse eight. Say, my son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So now we are focusing on the direction of fathers because they will always take a father or a mother to set up a family. Either family by blood, by law, or whosoever way. They will always take up a father or a mother to set it up. And here he says, he says, hear the instruction of thy father. Get instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. You see, all those things are made to keep us together. Not just keeping us together. They are made to secure us, to protect us. Just imagine you are born and there's nobody to take care of you. How do you think you survive that? The beds of the air will just eat you up. That's a disadvantage of not having a family. So we are glad we had one. We are glad we had people who took care of us selflessly. Selflessly, there's no way we can pay them back. Either their family by blood, or their family by law, or their family by friendship. We are glad. Like I saw a video of someone who took up a girl. The girl 
was born by a mad woman. Even while she was born, people left her there for almost three days and the rain was hitting on her, mosquitoes were eating her, people were passing and they were watching, but this man just came from nowhere. You see, only God knows what he will call that type of family and love, and he took her in, and today if you see that girl and you are told that this is where this girl is picked from, you will not believe it. You see? So God used that man to preserve that girl. So by the time she discovered what God wants her to do, she had been preserved before she would discover it. That's the basic essence of a family. That's the basic essence of a family. Let's quickly look at Proverbs 3 verse 12. He says, For whom the Lord loveth he corrected, even as a father, his son in whom he delighted. You see, I'll use that girl as a case study. Just imagine she's growing up. Despite the fact that biologically that man is not her father, there are certain things he will not allow her to do because those things will damage her. Yes. He will not keep his eyes open and look at her that she wants to take poison. No, he will not permit that. That's an example of who a father is supposed to be. So when you are being instructed and you are supposed to take correction, it is at your own detriment. Yes. One thing a family does is keeping us or preserving us till we discover destiny. And even while we discover destiny, we are still families. We will discover what God wants us to chase. Even while we discover what God wants us to chase, we are still family. Mostly and basically, till we are saved. Even while we are saved, even if your family is not saved, God still has his role in that family. Yes. God still has his plan there. God still has his significance there. You might not know his plan. But just because you think you are saved today, you disdain your family and you are looking at them like whatsoever you feel like is unfair, that is not the will of God. Even if you are walking on the right path and they are not walking on the right path, God is still intending to save them. Yes, there might be misunderstanding in the family based on your destiny or your purpose. But remember that without them, you will not be preserved to see this day. Yes, without them, you will not be preserved to see this day. Proverb 1 is, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the love of thy mother. Yes, forsake not the love of your mother. You see, the family, there, there are limitations in a family. There are limitations. You see, there are people that you discover that nobody can talk to, nobody can counsel them, nobody can guide them, nobody can direct them. But all of a sudden, you discover God saved them. God is using that to show the limitations of a family. Yes. To show how the heart of a human is. That's why we need to depend on him. That's why we need to depend on him. For I was 
my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. You see, you always will be loved in the sight of your mother. You will always be tender in the sight of your father. But some people are getting it wrong. Some fathers are getting it wrong. Some mothers are getting it wrong. They mistake hatred for love. Whereby you see a child growing up, you will not be able to correct that child. It's unfair. That is not love. Although the devil tries to deceive us. Like a video I saw in an airport how a, a child is embarrassing her mom. Quite alright, you see that you don't need to blame that child. Because for a child to grow up to a level that there is no respect for the parents and it, it becomes so obvious. It becomes so obvious. It simply means such parents is failing in their way. They might not deliberately, intentionally be failing, but the devil knows how to make them fail. Most especially when people are not saved, there will be no forgiveness made between the father and the mother. And when a home is not balanced, there will be an imbalanced attention on the children. There will be an imbalanced growth in the life of the children. There will be an imbalanced provision in the life of the children. And it will give the devil an advantage to do whatsoever he wants to do. And when parents are not getting it together, they think it's all about them. It's not all about them. It's all about those that are coming that you have not seen. Yes, it's all about those that are coming that you have not seen. You don't even know them, your children. Those are the main targets. Those are the main targets. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. You see, the Bible says children naturally do silly, careless things, but a good spanking will correct them. As a matter of fact, it may save their lives. Yes, this good spanking is applicable to the physical family and is applicable to the spiritual family, yes. Children that have been a child, both physically and spiritually have been a child, you know that children <laughs> naturally do silly, careless things, but a good spanky will correct them. You see, I know how my mom dealt with me when I was growing. I looked at it like, is wickedness but it's not that's love that's love i believe i'm able to think well now i see from her own side of view why she was doing all those things but just imagine she did not do those things to me i see the way some people treat their parents to the extent of using mouths to fight them and using their hands to fight them i cannot try that I can't. I love love life. I know it's not all about me. It's not all about me. You see, we should not mistake our role for hatred. Like I was telling a mother, I said, when you are angry, don't touch this child. When you are not angry, you can bring that child you punish that child, that child will know that this is not out of hatred. While you are punishing the child, make it conscious to that child that this is the offense why that child is being punished. You are building your home. And don't forget to pray also. Don't forget to pray because there are spirits that will whisper in the ear of that child. And that child will think he or she is the one thinking. Not knowing there is another teacher that wants to teach that child what you are not teaching them. So I believe we just 
something which I believe it will do a lot of good in our lives. It will do a lot of good in your life, the life of your friends, families, and other related ones. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video as God will be using it to touch someone through it. And I pray for you today that whatever is going on, going wrong in your family, God will help you to deal with it in the name of Jesus. Whosoever part you are down, God will help you to lift you up. Whosoever part the devil wants to use and attack your family, your children, your husband, your wife, it is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much and remain blessed.